Hello, so in our previous tutorial, we were able to create the API documentation and configure the REST API for our application. So in this tutorial, we are going to see how we can uh, set up the or containerize our application and we are going to be using Docker and uh, uh, Docker Compose. So the my best or my advice is uh, before you remember when you were starting this tutorial, I had uh, encouraged you to install uh, Docker and the uh, Docker desktop. So Docker in Windows integrates well with the uh, with the Windows subsystem for Linux, and uh, it doesn't matter if you're using it in like Linux or Mac because I believe their configuration there is probably even much simpler. So, but when it comes to our uh, Windows, there's a uh, we are there's a way that you have integrated it. They have integrated it well with the Windows subsystem for Linux. And since we are developing in the Linux uh, system or the WSL, uh, we should not be worried about uh, running Docker. So let's get into it. So I'll create a Docker file. And then in this Docker file, I'm going to the Docker file is a file that consists of instructions uh, on how to build your container, or rather how to build your image. Sorry, your image for whichever app that you are developing. And um, in this case, uh, my first uh, line will be importing or I'm specifying the Python. Uh, image that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using Python uh, 3.10. At least it should be the same as what I'm using here in my computer. So let me just check the Python version that I'm using. Additionally, I can also check this in the pip file. So you see I have Python 3.10. So I'm going to specify that Python 3.10 and I'll use a flavor of uh, Slim Buster. So this is uh, one of the Linux distros. So you can choose to use whichever you want but for this one i believe uh, i use it because it comes with many underlying packages or may, uh, at least uh, enough packages that you can use for uh, this specific context so the other step will be adding uh, an environment variable so we have the python don't write bytecode so what this one does is that it uh, the bytecode files may contain that are generated by Python. They may contain sensitive information from uh, some source code, or and this and this is by best practice is to add this to reduce the risk of accidental exposure to sensitive information. But this is just one of the arguments. Uh, you may have to check on those others. So I'm also going to add these and buffer. So we're ensuring that the output generated by Python script is immediately visible and our log data can be uh, is immediately written to the file without buffering. Otherwise, with buffering, we may have delays in uh, seeing our logs uh, or Python writing to our logs. So I'm also going to install dependencies that we require to be able to interact with our database. And among them is, uh, first of all, we are working with GIS data. So we need the development packages of GDAL, which stands for just Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. And it is used uh, primarily, it's developed in C, and it's used in, in handling the uh, geospatial data. And then we also have the build essential that is used for building uh, necessary packages. And then we have this dependency for libpq that is normally used by PostgreSQL. And then uh, we are going to create our directory. So I'm going to create a directory here. I'm not going to call it locator. I'm going to call it uh, maybe home. Uh, maybe let me call it geo user. And then uh, Linux support cr supports creation of users and groups. So we are going to create a user here and give them uh, this ID. Uh, by default, Linux gives the root user, I believe, 1,000, or the normal user can take any number from 1,000 to uh, 60,000, I believe. 
uh, but you can refer to that. So since I'm using these in an Ubuntu or a Linux container, and these are Linux commands, by the way, so the root user is given the ID zero, and uh, system users can use one to sorry one to nine hundred and ninety nine. So you can refer to the Linux documentation for these. And the reason why we are creating a group is because you can be able to add multiple users inside a group and give them certain rights and certain properties in Linux. So the other thing is that we do not want to run these as root. Uh, I know we are in the development environment, so it may not matter, but in a production environment, uh, which is what we are mimicking anyway, uh, because eventually you will deploy this application in a Linux and uh, in a production environment. So you need to create a user rather than use the root. And it is among the Docker standard best practices. Uh, so the next step, we are going to install uh, pipenv uh, globally in our application. And then we are going to create an environment variable that points to home, uh, which will be our home directory or our home folder. So in this case, it will be the folder that we created up there. Uh, who is a home geo user and then uh, we can configure our application uh, we can configure our environment variable for our home folder and then our app home will be uh, let me just add this will be our home geo user and then we will add uh, our application so we can just call it health uh, facilities health facilities yeah so this will be our app home and then we can of course make the directory because this is just an environment that we have created we haven't uh, specified anything and then we can add our working directory we can specify this as our working directory and then uh, the next step will be copying our pip files uh, into this app home or into the working directory and then we can install since we are working with uh, in our development environment we can just run this uh, pip and we install uh, development uh, packages so pip automatically detects these pip file and pip file.log and installs the packages from them and then we are going to copy the rest of the directory so it's more or less the same like what we do with the, the requirements or txt just because the only difference is because i'm using pipenv in this case uh, so we have we are going to copy our, all our files and then we are don't we, let's not forget to change our ownership for this directory so we are going to run change ownership command and uh, we do it recursively so we, are, we have our user who is geo user and then our geo user and we are giving these uh, permissions to our referring our permissions to our app folder and then we can switch to the or we can change to the uh, user rather than root because by default it normally uses root and uh, there's something I forgot to change here we need to change this to our geo geo user uh, we'll do the same here do the same here actually there's a command I think that you can use in our to highlight everything yeah so I believe we are done with our docker file so this docker file is what we be using to build and then our next step will be to set up our compose so we will call it docker uh, compose uh, dot yaml. so that's what we have so in our docker compose uh, we are going to set up our version so the work of uh, docker compose yeah, so the docker compose is a tool that is normally used to define and run multiple container docker applications so it's actually not necessary to create it here but nevertheless we are going to do it assuming that we are going to add other service additional services maybe later uh, let's say a front end app uh, load balancer like nginx or something else like flask uh, or if you are going to be 
setting your software or your setup from a monolith like like this monolithic application that we have into a microservices architecture then you may need to have this docker compose so it's really not necessary for this step but nevertheless we are just going to create it uh, anticipating that we are going to be using uh, adding other services so the first step is uh, specifying the version so in this case i'll be using version 3.9 and then i will specify some the services so our service our first service will be I just can just call it post gis and uh, this represents this will be the database service so i normally make use of a service or a post gis which has been pre-configured from geonode uh, geonode is a geonode is a an open source uh, geospatial project heavily built on top of django so they have these if you go to docker hub and search for these you're going to see it and uh, the specific version that i'm using is 15 and uh, i can give it I, pre I usually like naming my containers because at least if you're running multiple many images then you can be able to or containers you can be able to see what you are running so i'll just call it post gis uh, we can call it post gis for health uh, facilities it's kind of like a long name but doesn't matter so we have the volumes so uh volumes kind of give in docker it normally gives persistence so whenever you you know the containers are usually read only so if you do not map your data to a volume then whenever you de destroy your container then it the data is also destroyed with it but in this case if we push our data into a postgis database we need it to be there whether if the service is down or it's going it's we have shut it down for maintenance or there's an issue that has caused the service to shut down then we can make good use of uh of all the volumes so let's award our volume so i'm going to specify a directory which does not exist at the moment but we are going to create it so i can just i can just call it uh, maybe init db and i'll explain why i'm doing that so this one will be mapped to the docker uh, entry point for postgres and uh, yeah our second volume will be mapped to of course now this one will be our data so we have postgres uh, data uh, which will be mapped to the Postgres data. Normally, Postgres stores its data in in Linux in uh, this directory, uh, var lib variables, uh, library Postgres SQL, and then uh, data. So these are the two very important volumes that we require. And then we will need certain environment uh, environments. So. Uh, we will call this environment we don't want to expose all the environment variables to our database so we will get specific uh, uh, environment variables so i'm just going to copy something here from my previous project and add them there so postgres password uh, refers to the uh, password for postgres the administrative user then we have the database name user and password and then uh, the other thing we'll do we will specify the ports uh, so our ports will be will have so these ones what we normally do here is uh, we specify the ports but now this is only necessary if you are exposing your container let's say maybe to the internet but internally uh, you may not uh, require this uh, so Let's also add another rebu for restarting. So we'll set it to always uh, restart. We can also set the restart to restart when on only on failure. Uh, but let's set it at that. Then we have our Django container or our Django service. So our Django service, uh, uh, we will specify the build uh, property. 
And inside the build property, we can specify the contexts, which will be our current uh, directory. And uh, in this case, we'll also specify the Docker file, which is uh, sorry, which is a Docker uh, file. And then, okay, I don't know why it's renaming that. So we have the Docker file, and then of course we can also give it a container name. So in this case, I'll call it Django for health uh, facilities and then inside the container in this case now in this category or in this service we will be using an environment file so the environment file will be uh, you can call it dot env env and then we will add the startup command. So in this case, your command will be uh, python manage.py uh, run server. And then we also specify the port in which, or the URL and the port in which it's going to be running. So in this case, it's just going to be running at uh, local host, but uh, we have to specify this otherwise uh, we, we may have issues so let's add our volumes so the in our volume we will just map the current folder or current directory to home uh, so i tried to map these to use this variable up home in my previous instance or in my previous case but i was encountering problems so i'll just add these as a full path or a, what you call an absolute path so i'll add that Health facilities and uh, the other thing is a port so additionally we'll add port 8000 8000 uh, we can also set it to restart and uh, that will be always restart yeah and then we can add depends on so depends on property normally specifies uh, that this depends on another service so in this case we'll say that it depends on the postgis service because now the postgis service will have to run first and then uh, this other one will also uh, run uh, later or run after so it will only run after it has uh, added our so we, we also have volumes and in this case, I'm going to add post Chris data. I add a column there. So we have uh, created our docker compose.yaml file. So remember, we have pointed out or we have referred to an environment variable file, that, but that, that file does not exist. So let's create it. So we'll have a .env. And uh, in this case, I'll just put move the docker.compose the side uh, because I need to look at these variables so in our .env file uh, we will add our first variable which will be that uh, we'll also add uh, this uh, we'll also add the username I will also set the DB password. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, maybe we can add other things like debug. Uh, we can also add allowed uh, hosts from uh, Django settings. Uh, we can also add. Uh, other items so let me see what we can add yeah, so basically I've uh, added the at least the variables that come into mind so we have the Postgres default uh, password or the Postgres users password database name user host and port so in this case I'm going to replace all these hard-coded values using the uh, the ENV uh, I don't know if I have configured the yeah, I've not configured. Uh, remember, I install, we installed the Django. 
environ so we have not configured the Django environ and I believe that's important to set it up so let's see how we are gonna set it up uh, so I'll make a bunch of imports here so I'll import the environ uh, the top most part here and then I'm going to uh, set the casting for this and then I'm going to tell now the environment to read from whichever file so in this case uh, I can add this here so I'm going to I'm telling basically telling it to read from OS and I think I need to import OS yeah, so I'm telling this to read uh, the environment variables from the .env file inside the base directory which is defined here. So this is the root directory. So it's basically going to look for this .env file. Yeah, so now the next, everything else now we are going to change it. So in this, I'm just going to, let me just copy this from, these names from the variable. I mean from the uh, this file so let me just copy this as well so we'll have the debug variable uh, for the allowed hosts uh, it uh, may be a bit different Uh, because we are we have added a, a list so our allowed host will be of course the environment but we are going to uh, make or slide uh, or rather split it uh, using spaces so it can take local host uh, 127.0.0.1 or these zero zeros and of course this is like the slicing uh, uh, parameter but you can look at the standard naming of the uh, environment variables it's also present in the docker uh, documentation so we have the name so we're also going to replace this uh, with our db name and also we are going to add the db user Uh, for the password, you'll also have it as a DB password. So this is just a copy and paste kind of an affair. So we also, for the host, uh, we are also going to take the DB host. And uh, for the port, we are also going to do the same. Yeah, so I'm not sure if there's something else we have forgotten. Uh, so, anyway, if there is something, then we are going to get uh, some errors. So, let me exit. I was generating the secret key. You can use the secrets. Uh, that is an inbuilt Python uh, library. So, now after doing this, we are going to run our Docker uh, Compose. Or oh, something that I forgot, you need to ensure that Docker is running. So since I'm using my Windows, I have opened Docker and I can I can ensure that it is running. If you're not sure if it is running, you can actually just type the Docker command. It's going to give you some output somewhere. So uh, let's just run Docker Compose uh, build. Yeah, so we have an issue. It's saying Postgres password uh, DB name is not set, defaulting to a blank string. Okay, so this one has to do with our... Let me first ensure that I've saved all files.
Yeah, so this user does not have permissions to run uh, Docker, uh, so I need to use sudo, which is not recommended. So let me just show you a quick fix for that. So uh, we can look for Docker post install. So whenever you install Docker, you may need to set your current user or add them into the group uh, settings. So let's add the post installation. Let's use this. So we have this. And I think I'm going to run this inside the Linux. I have my Linux running. So I'm just going to set this up. Yeah, of course it says that it exists. Then we are going to add current user to this because I do not want to run be running this as a sudo. So, um, and because I do not want to restart, then I'm going to use this a new group uh, docker. I think actually I should run this inside VS Code. So another thing that I'm going to do, I should, I should also stop the Postgres that is running inside this because it's going to interfere with the port, the same ports that we are using. Uh, so I'm just going to stop this and I can just confirm using status. Yeah, so it has stopped. So you can refer to this post installation script. I'm going to share it with you. Uh, so let me just add that new group, Docker. And uh, my first step will be, let me now try uh, Docker Compose uh, Build. Yeah, so it starts building. So it may take some time or not, but let's give it some time. And uh, we are going to resume after it has completed building. 